In this lesson, we want to talk about elasticity. Elasticity. When you think about elasticity, I always think about like a rubber band, uh, very elastic as I pull it apart, it stretches a long way. I contrast with something that is inelastic. If I were to pull on this rope, it wouldn't stretch much. We would call that inelastic. In economics, the elasticity, the definition of elasticity is a measure of how much one economic variable responds to changes in another economic variable. Let's think about a, uh, the way this formula is actually set up. The price elasticity of demand, we look at the change in one variable over the change in another variable. We're going to expand on this though. And, uh, remember, we're uh, much more interested in the percentage changes because percentage changes allow us to ignore the index or the number uh, scale that those values are working on. So we're, we're looking at the percentage change divided by the percentage change of another variable. With price elasticity of demand, we want to look at the percentage change in quantity demanded over the percentage change in price. Note that it's quantity demanded, not demand, quantity demanded. Um, that would be a movement up and down the demand curve as price changes. So we're just looking at that demand curve. What happens when we change the price to the quantity demanded? Um, I actually prefer the mathematical version of this uh, better. It's much more concise, but there's the English version. Okay, uh, so we take a couple of steps to do our elasticity demand. First is we calculate the elasticity using the formula that we just uh, illustrated. The second step is to take the absolute value of the coefficient that we calculate in that formula. And the third step is to compare that uh, value to a benchmark number of 1. 1 is the key benchmark in this case. If that value is greater than 1, then we would uh, be able to conclude that the relationship is elastic. It is price elastic. If it's less than 1, then it would be considered price inelastic. All right, let's um, look at an example of this. We're going to analyze gasoline and uh, there's the demand curve for gasoline. At a $3 price, what would the quantity demanded be? Well, to find that out, we would just uh, draw a line from $3 over to the demand curve. And once we touch the demand curve, we would drop down to the quantity axes. And in this case, at $3, we would have a, a quantity demanded of 5 gallons. Also, it's interesting to note what would the total revenue be in this case. Well, you sell five gallons of gas at $3. That total revenue would be $15. That square there would be $15 square. All right, we're thinking about raising the price from $3 up to $6. What would the elasticity coefficient be if we were to move from 3 up to 6? Well, uh, note um, the changes there. Uh, we would drop one gallon of gas by changing the price by $3. But that is just a change. What we're really interested in is the percentage changes, the relationship between those two percentage changes. Let me just put up the uh, elasticity calculator here, and there's our formula. Can we plug those values into the formula? Let's start with a percentage change in quantity demanded. How would we calculate that? Well, remember it's new minus old divided by old. So on the quantity demanded, what's the new quantity demanded? Yeah, it's 4. The old command, uh, quantity demanded was 5, so it should be 4 minus 5 divided by 5. And the uh, percentage change in price, the new price is $6. The old price was $3 divided by the old price. That would give us 6 minus 3 divided by 3. Go ahead and do those calculations, and we'd end up with a value of minus 0.2 divided by 1. We want to take the absolute value of that. The absolute value of that would be a 0.2. We take that 0.2 now and compare it to our index. Remember what our benchmark number was for elasticity analysis for price elasticity? Yeah, it was 1. That value is less than 1. Therefore, we would conclude that gasoline is inelastic in that price range. Okay, let's uh, look at another product, ice cream. And we'll put a demand curve out there at $3 a gallon. How many gallons of ice cream would we sell? Well, it looks like we'd sell five gallons of ice cream. 
at a price of $3. We're thinking about raising that price from $3 up to $4 a gallon. So if we were to do that at $4 a gallon, our uh, quantity would actually decline from 5 gallons down to 3 gallons. Can we calculate the elasticity coefficient with this uh, demand curve? Well, we're going from up that curve. We're actually going to make a movement up that curve as price goes up. Let's look at our calculator. There's our formula. Plugging those values into the formula, the percentage change in quantity demanded would be 3 minus 5 divided by 5. The percentage change in price would be 4 minus 3 divided by 3. That would give us a 0.4 and a 0.33 or a value of 1.2. So if we were to increase the price, we would actually note that it would be elastic because that value of 1.2 is greater than 1. Now take a look at the box areas here. At a price of $3, what would our total revenue be? Be $3 times 5 gallons or $15. Now if we were to move up to a $4 price, what would our total revenue be? It would be price times quantity or $4 times 3 gallons or $12. So we go from a total revenue of $15 down to a total revenue of only $12. That's one of the interpretations of elasticity is the change in total revenue. If an item is elastic, if you raise the price, you will actually reduce your revenue. All right, let's look at a price decrease, the other direction. Same thing with our ice cream. We want to go, in this case though, from a $4 price down to a $3 price. If we're going to increase, excuse me, if we're going to decrease the price, we want to put this item on sale, would we be able to increase our total revenue? Well, uh, in this case, we use our formula and do the calculation. The calculation is going to be a little bit different here because now we're moving, the quantity is going to be increasing and the price is going to be decreasing. So we would have quantity would be 5 minus 3 divided by 3. Percentage change in price would be 3 minus 4 divided by 4. In that case, we would end up with these values. I've converted those to percentages. We could use decimal or percentage. That's going to give us a uh, elasticity of demand coefficient of 2.67. That would suggest that uh, that price is very elastic. So if we drop the price, we clearly could increase our total revenue. All right, that is uh, our introduction to elasticity.